This video has been made as a support tool for the 2021 Daffodil Project in partnership with the University of Dundee. Today, we're going to talk you through the process of DNA extraction using the KaiGen DNA Z Mini Kit. This video was filmed in a real working lab and the DNA extraction you watch is for real scientific research here at Dundee University in the Division of Plant Sciences based at the James Hutton Institute. Some of the equipment used might be slightly different to the equipment that you have in your classroom, but your teacher will be able to talk you through any differences. Okay, first of all, let's get set up. You'll need a centrifuge. Your centrifuge might look different to this one, but your teacher will be able to show you how to use the one in your classroom. If your centrifuge can't spin as fast as the protocol says, don't worry, just extend the time that you spin your samples. Your result will be the same. Inside a centrifuge is a large rotor with wells to place your samples. It's really important that samples are placed evenly around the rotor and that samples adjacent or opposite to each other are similar weights. If not, it can break the centrifuge and it can actually be a little bit dangerous. For this protocol, you will need a P1000 pipette, a P200 pipette and a P20 pipette. As you can see, we forgot our P20. Whoops! <laughs> You'll also need a box of pipette tips for each size pipette. You'll be shown in a different demonstration or video how to use a pipette and how to set its volume. Behind the boxes of pipette tips, you will see a machine called a Vortex. Your Vortex might look a little different, but they all do the same job. They thoroughly mix samples. You can also see a bottle of ethanol. Ethanol is a solvent that is added to some of the reagents in the DNA extraction kit and is needed for them to work properly. This might be done in advance for you as ethanol is highly flammable, it can be toxic if it's ingested or inhaled, and it can irritate your skin and eyes. You'll see the warning labels on the bottle showing this. In your kit, you should find purple and clear spin columns. You will also have clear plastic catch tubes, which aren't shown in this image, and RNA stock solution, which also isn't pictured. In addition to these and the tubes, you will have four solutions. Buffer AP1 comes ready to use, and as you can see, it is a lysis buffer. Lysis means to break open, and it's used to break open the cells in your plant tissue. Buffer AW1 is a wash buffer and needs to be diluted with 25 mL of ethanol before it is used. Buffer AW2 is also a wash buffer and needs to be diluted with 95 mL of ethanol before it's used. As mentioned before, ethanol might be added to AW1 and AW2 for you before you use them. Wash buffers are used to remove proteins and debris that we don't need, leaving the DNA that we want clear of contaminants. Buffer AE is an elution buffer. An elution buffer is used to detach your DNA from the spin column at the end of the process. Okay, so now you have everything that you need. You're also going to need a water bath or a hot plate, some 1.5ml and 2ml Eppendorf tubes and, of course, your plant samples. If your wash buffers haven't had ethanol added, your first step will be to do this. Here we can see the ethanol being measured and added to the buffer AW1. Can you remember how much ethanol we need to add to AW1? Yep, that's right, it's 25 mil. Once added, tick the bottle and add the date the ethanol was added. It's important that we know the date because ethanol can evaporate over time, which changes the concentration of the buffer. Buffers that include ethanol have a shelf life, so please double check your kit to see how long it lasts. Now repeat this process with buffer AW2, adding 95 ml of ethanol this time. And don't forget to give them a little mix. There are different ways to prepare your plant material and this will be decided by your teacher. The most common ways are using a tissue lyser which uses beads and shaking to mash up the plant tissue. You can also use cold spray and a mortar and pestle. The method that we have used is a liquid nitrogen and a mortar and pestle. All of these techniques can be dangerous so please follow your teacher's instructions very carefully. You might even be given your plant samples already prepared looking a little bit like this.
Here we have one of the scientists in Dundee demonstrating how we prepared one of our samples. So we pour liquid nitrogen and then we add the plant sample. The plant sample is frozen solid almost immediately and that allows us to grind it down to a powder. It takes an awful lot of grinding and you'll see that just now. Once your plant material has been ground down to a fine powder, you can add it to a 2ml Eppendorf tube using a spatula. Something really important to remember is to make sure that your tube is labelled with what your sample is. Using your P1000 pipette, add 400 microliters of AP1 buffer to your sample. This is your lysis buffer. Then, using your P20 pipette, Add four microliters of RNA stock solution to the sample too. Once everything's added, you can then mix them together well using the vortex. Next, take your sample and place it on a heat block previously set to 65 degrees Celsius. The sample should be on the heat block for 10 minutes in total, but it's important to invert your sample at least three times during this time. Inverting a sample just means gently turning it upside down. The combination of the buffer, RNAs, heat and inversion is breaking open your plant cells. When you remove your samples from the heat block, you will need to spin them down in a centrifuge to move any plant material stuck to the inside of the lid back down inside the tube. We've used a mini benchtop centrifuge here, but any centrifuge can be used. It only takes a few seconds to move the samples down. What is in your tube now is referred to as a lysate. It's a little bit like a smoothie of all of your sample cell's inner components. We now add 130 microliters of buffer P3 to your lysate. After adding your buffer, give everything a really good mix on the vortex. Your next step is to incubate your samples on ice for five minutes. This step precipitates detergent, proteins and polysaccharides that we don't want to keep in the samples. While your samples are chilling on ice, you've got a really good opportunity to set up the tubes that you will need for the next steps. Label your lilac catch tube, your 1.5ml Eppendorf tube and clear filter tube with your sample information. You can then set them up in your tube rack ready to go. Now you probably won't have six samples though, so don't panic. Once your samples have been on ice for around about five minutes, load them into the centrifuge. Here you can see how to load the samples so that they are evenly spread around the centrifuge in order for it to stay balanced. Centrifuge at 14,000 RPM for five minutes. If your centrifuge doesn't go up to 14,000, don't worry, just extend the time. And what's happening here is the cellular material that we don't want, such as organelles and cell wall components, are being pushed down to the bottom of the tubes by the force of the centrifuge, and they're forming a very firm pellet that sticks to the tube. Carefully remove the tube from the centrifuge and either pour or carefully pipette the liquid in the tube, 
which we call the supernatant, into your spin column. Be careful not to disturb the pellet of material that we don't want. Once you've transferred the supernatant, you can discard the tube containing the pellet. Transfer your spin column to the centrifuge and spin as per the protocol instructions. The supernatant you added to the spin column is being forced through a filter in the column and any remaining material that we don't want is sticking to that filter. Carefully remove the filter from your tube and transfer the liquid at the bottom of the tube that has been pushed through the filter into a new tube. You should get around about 450 microliters of liquid but don't worry if you have a little more or a little less. Once you've transferred your filtered liquid into a new tube, work out what one and a half times the volume of your filtered liquid is. Then, add that volume of AW buffer to the tube and mix it by gently pipetting up and down. The next step involves a filter column. Here, you can have a good look at what it's like inside. Transfer 650 microliters of your filtered liquid to your spin column and then centrifuge your sample. This time the filter is catching the DNA in your liquid and the liquid that flows through the filter isn't needed anymore. Remove the tube from the centrifuge, pour away the liquid in the bottom of the filter tube and keep repeating the process by adding your mixture to the spin column and centrifuging, then discarding the liquid that pushes through the filter until you have used it all up. Once you have passed all of your liquid through the filter and discarded the liquid that's come through, take your filter and transfer it to a new clean catch tube. The filter in your new catch tube is filled with lots and lots of DNA. Next, add 500 microliters of buffer AW2 to your spin column. AW2 buffer is essentially cleaning the DNA that's stuck to your filter. It's time to centrifuge again. Place your spin column in the centrifuge and note that for this step the centrifugation time is different so remember to double check your protocol before you do this stage. Again, if your centrifuge doesn't go up to the speed advised in the protocol, just extend the length of time you have your sample in the centrifuge. Carefully transfer your filter holding your clean DNA into your 1.5ml Eppendorf tube. Be careful not to transfer any ethanol along with it though. If you like, you can empty the buffer from the spin column and let the filter air dry for a few minutes for the ethanol to evaporate before transferring to the new tube. Follow your teacher's advice for this. We're getting really close to having our DNA now. It's the final step. Add 50 microliters of AE buffer Remember, AE buffer is the elution buffer that releases the DNA from the filter of your spin column. When you're adding the buffer, be sure to add it directly into the centre of your filter. And here we can see one of our Dundee scientists demonstrating how to carefully add the AE buffer to your filter column. To make sure that the buffer really soaks in and releases the DNA from your filter, incubate it at room temperature for the time indicated in your protocol. Don't worry if you incubate it for a little bit longer, it won't really do any harm. Once it's incubated, it's time for the very final step. Put your sample in the centrifuge for the last time. And what's happening here is that your DNA is being released from the filter and it's being pushed into your Eppendorf tube. Note the very slightly different way these samples need to be loaded into the centrifuge to make sure that the lines of the filters and the Eppendorf tubes are safely within the rotor. Remove your sample from the centrifuge and discard your filter column and ta-da! Now you have your DNA. Very well done.